So what we've got going on with exploit development is this transition from regular hacking, which is just identifying vulnerabilities and launching someone's public exploit at it, to finding a vulnerability and writing a weaponized exploit for it. What was all of that that I just did? You just watched me run a whole bunch of nmap stuff, but what exactly did I do? The first command I did was a ping sweep. So right here, I ping sweep. I try to figure out what hosts are online. You'll notice what I got out of that, not much. So what I got out of that tells me only one host is up. I turn around and I run another scan and I find that if I use DNS instead of ICMP and try to ping, I can see that there's actually more hosts that are up. Then I port scan. When I port scan, I try to see what services are running. After that, I look for the version numbers of those particular services. And I can see that it's Nginx version 10.0. So now I'll say, okay, I'll look for Nginx, trying to see if there's a vulnerable version of Nginx and I don't see 1.10.3 in here. So now that's frustrating because as I'm looking at that, I now realize, well, I can't break into this machine. That leads us to like, well, what are we gonna do? Well, most of us, this is the process that we go through when we're trying to attack machines, right? We ping sweep, we port scan, we banner grab. And that's not that bad, right? That's good that you guys know that's the process. So now that we know that's the process, the next step is, well, how do you become the guy who finds those vulnerabilities, right? Like, how do you, how do you do that? You're gonna see the different levels of skill. When you're evaluating the skill of an uh, offensive person, skill level one, they can run scanners, okay? So they can run a tool like Nessus, and then they get the output of the tool, and they go to the admin and they say, hey, Mr. Admin, you need to apply this patch. You need to fix this server. Skill level two can do manual vulnerability validation. At your Windows command prompt, you can type commands like system info at your Linux command prompt. You can DP, DPKG and list what's installed on the server. So you can take a report and you can figure out if the report is correct or not. Okay. So that's a tier two person. A tier two person doesn't need to blindly trust the results, he can verify them himself. So now the question is, what about tier level three? The tier level three can test for vulnerabilities that the scanner cannot find. The scanner is looking for known vulnerabilities, right? Version 1.2.3 of the software has a known vulnerability. The vendor has accepted it. The vendor has released a patch. There's reference data on it. That's, that's a known vulnerability. Your tier level one and tier level two guys, they look for known vulnerabilities. That's the reason why it's just a banner grab. You ping sweep, identify the host in the network. You port scan, you identify what services are on each machine and where they are in the network. Then you banner grab, version query each service, and now you go look up that banner on uh, a website like uh, Security Focus or CERT.org that gives you, or National Vulnerability Database, NVD, that gives you this vulnerability data based on the software version number. These are all known vulnerabilities. What we want to cover right now is how do you look for unknown vulnerabilities? Now you've got the vulnerable server. So the vulnerable server is an application that's going to run on port 9999. So if you take a look, 
Now that I've connected to it on port 9999, you can see that it says waiting for a client connection. This is me sending that connection to it. And now it prompts me for help. So in this case, the server receives commands. That's what it calls it. And then if you want to issue a command, we'll say help. So now I tell it help, and then it gives me a list of these commands that it supports. So what I want to do is I want to write a fuzzer for each one of these commands that it supports. So the fuzzer is going to be written in Python. Pretty simple. We look at this code, we can see that it does a while loop, and this while loop keeps appending more A's. You could just say, you know, like this buffer equals A, counter equals 50, and now you see while the length of buffer is less than or equal to 100, you can buffer dot append A times counter, and now I can counter plus equal 50. And now if I go buffer zero, it's A, one, Okay, are you guys noticing that every time through the loop, right, it's adding 50 more A's? So the thought process here is for every one of these commands that the web server accepts, we want to keep increasingly sending more A's to it. So now when we double click on this, you see how it just goes crazy until it eventually crashes the app. So the app blows up, right? And that's actually what we wanted. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna restart the app and I'm gonna rerun the fuzzer. Okay, now you guys notice that this time it crashes and it's crashing right on like T-Run 2750. So I'm gonna close the fuzzer rerun the app. Now closed on T-Run 2650. Rerun the app. T-Run 2800. Rerun the app. T-Run 2750. So you see that it keeps consistently crashing somewhere around T-Run. So you open up the application and then you're going to open up your debugger. Once you have your debugger open, then what I'll do is I'll choose file and attach. And I want to attach my debugger to this vulnerable application. All right, so what ends up happening is I'm going to hit my play button two times to make sure that my debugger says running right down here. So as long as my debugger says running, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna rerun that simple fuzzer. So I rerun the simple fuzzer. Let's see what it looks like when it crashes. Okay, so now the application's crashed. Since the application's crashed, what you wanna do is you wanna look up here in the registers and you wanna see what it looks like during this crash. So we can see that we control registers EAX and ESP. We also control EIP and EBP. So I'm going to debug and restart. Now the goal of what I'm doing is to see, can I rerun another script that just attacks the T-Run function. So if you look at this, it's just sending characters, 3,000 characters directly to the T-Run function. That's all it's doing. Now what we wanna do is while our debugger is running, we wanna run that script. I double click on the script and I wanna see if when I've crashed it, 
I want to see if when I've crashed it, do I control the exact same registers? I control EAX, ESP, EBP, EIP. And if you look down here, this is ESP. Down in the bottom right corner of your debugger is ESP. So since that's where your ESP is, that's my stack, I can see how many A's I was able to get into the stack. Let's do a quick review. You get an application. Skill level three is a guy who can figure out the app type. You've got apps that are standalone apps, client server apps, and web apps. Standalone apps take input over file, keyboard, or mouse. Client server apps take in data over a logical network port. And then uh, web apps, you interact with them over a browser. This is a client server app because it runs on port 9999. So it's app type, input type, then after that, we map and fuzz the application entry points. So you figure out all the commands that you use to talk to the app. Now, your developer might not call them commands. He might call them methods. So if we're attacking a web server, we might attack HTTP methods. He might call them verbs. Uh, he might call them functions. He might call them subroutines. If he's an MVC-based developer, he might call them controllers. When data goes into an application and the code acts upon the data, we're attacking the code that's acting upon the data. That's what we're attacking. If it's a function, fine, we're attacking a function. If it's a method, fine, we're attacking a method or a controller or a subroutine. It doesn't matter what the developer wants to call it. All hacking is around that one point. You wrote some code that takes in data and you didn't validate the data coming into it. Injection attacks. You didn't validate who's running it. Session manipulation attacks. You didn't validate the output of it. Uh, format string bugs, cross-site scripting. So your steps are step one, app type. Step two, input type. Step three, map and fuzz. Uh, application entry points. Step four, isolate the crash. Did you see when it crashed reliably on 2100? T-Run 2100, we stopped sending data to all of the other points. 